what's going on everybody check check this out check that out like literally my favorite place in the entire world right here on Lake Okeechobee and we've got a another little challenge today matter of fact it is a mystery tackle box challenge you're not going to want to miss this one so stay tuned for this one okay do not click off this is going to be one of the better ones because we're going to do a little contest to get you guys involved so I am going to do a mystery tackle box challenge right here where I'm going to go through this box and hopefully catch a fish on every lure in the box and we're going to measure the fish but I'm not going to show you the measurements and you're going to guess the total inches of bass that I catch out of this box today. And the total inches is gonna win a three month subscription to Mystery Tackle Box, the Pro Box, okay? On me, okay? So just pay attention. We're gonna catch the fish. I'm gonna hold them up to the camera, let you get a good look at them. Let's see what's in the box. So guys, this is gonna be the official ruler for today. Oh yeah, pretty nice, pro rule. So hopefully we'll catch some, you know, 14, 15, 16, 17 inch fish today. That'd be nice. But let's see what's in this box right now, okay? Mystery Tackle Box is sponsoring this video, guys, so thank you so much for Mystery Tackle Box. Why do I like Mystery Tackle Box? Because new lures show up in my house every single month in this box right here. And it really, honestly, guys, it really, it, it opens my eyes up on new lures, new techniques, because a lot of times, and I know you uh, probably a lot of the same, you kind of find yourself in the rut of buying the same lures, fishing the same way, fishing the same tackle, right? And so when you open up this mystery tackle box, you see lures that you might not have picked up at a tackle shop, and it challenges you to go give them a shot. And a lot of times, these baits are really, really good, and they become some of my favorite baits out there. So this month's box, Let's see what I have inside. Oh yeah. Uh -huh. Boom, how about that? That is the Mac Daddy Crawl. This right here is a creature bait that is great for flipping. And we'll do some flipping in these reeds here behind us. And this might even be one of the ones we do first. But look at that right there. That's a great bait for punching. Okay, it's a good color right there. Awesome little deal by Bruiser Baits. I've caught a lot of fish. On bruiser baits over the years those are that's actually a legit company made down here in florida so really good stuff all right check this out guys a jinko square bill crankbait this is a cd2 great color right there you know i'm not sure if i'll catch any out here on this grass but there's some channels and there's some rocks in the rim canal but this would be a great bait for the rim canal speaking of crankbaits check this one out right here lucky craft bds1 american shad this little crankbait right here is one of my favorite crankbaits of all times. It's, this little dude catches fish no matter where you're at. It's a shallow running crankbait, but it's a good one. This is like, this is OG awesome right here. I'm serious. Swim jig, guys. Thunderhawk swim jig right there. Oh yeah, we're gonna tie that on. Perfect day for a swim jig in this grass here behind us. A little bit of flipping, a little bit of swim jigging. This is a th uh, quarter ounce. We're gonna match that up with a little white trailer of some sort. That should get bit today, and that actually could be one of our favorite baits for today. Who can go wrong with a frog, guys? Look at this right here. This is Blitz Lures, Poppin' Frog. Great color, that yellow, green. I mean, that you just can't go wrong. Good color, good choice. Never thrown this particular frog. I don't know anything about it, but it looks good. Right out of the pack, pretty legit. And then, of course, they throw some hooks in there as well. So guys, that's what's in our mystery tackle box this month. So what should be the first lure I try? How about we try, because it's low light right now, let's try this, okay? Thunderhawk, let's give it a shot. All right, so one little tip I'm gonna give you right off the bat is where to cast this swim jig. A lot of people would think, just throw it right to the edge, right? Not too far back in, because all that grass way back in there is super, super thick. You might think to yourself, man, I'm, I'm not gonna be able to reel my jig through there. I'm not gonna be able to get a fish out of there, but that's why you fish with braid. That's why you fish with a big, heavy rod. And I do, I throw it way back in there, guys. Look at that. Now, I'm gonna hold my rod at 10 o'clock and I'm just reeling. As this jig starts to get hung up, I don't twitch the rod or jerk the rod because a lot of times that will make the weed guard pop and get stuck in the grass. So if I just constantly reel it, four wheel drive it like that, like it's getting hung up, but I just keep reeling. It's getting hung up, but I just keep reeling. It just kind of fa fa falls and flops through that grass. And what happens is it's really cool. Those fish will come up and grab it in that thick grass. Sometimes they blow up on it, knock it out of the water, and sometimes they just roll, just real, real easy, roll right up on top of it. But I want to hold my rod tip at about 10 o'clock. Not like this, not down, like you're in open water, like this, because you're in this thick grass. Two reasons you hold your rod tip up. One is it keeps your line up out of the grass, okay? Keeps your line up out of the grass, so only maybe three or four feet of your line is going in the grass to your bait instead of having 20 or 30 feet of line wobbling through all the grass. Okay, the other thing is when one hits it, I can be like this and drop my tip, then set the hook. 
and that's important. You know, if you're straight like this and one hits, it'll direct the rod out of your hand. So, you know, it's those little things that make a huge difference on a swim jig, but that's, uh, that's what you're gonna do here. We didn't get one on this little patch, so I'm gonna power pole up, we'll fish this little edge right here, go to this next little patch right through here. Let's see what happens. Oh, golly, he smoked it way back there. Dang it. Way back in there. Look how far I'm throwing that swim jig. Hold my tip up. Ooh. Oh, God. God. There he is. There he is. There he is. Ha <laughs> ha! Got you, sucker! Got you, sucker! Not a big one, though. Not a big one. But we're gonna measure him. We're gonna measure him because it doesn't matter about pounds, it matters about inches. So, guys, give you a good look at him real quick, okay? There's a good look. No trick photography. There it is, right there. There's the fish. You do your do your guesstimations the best you can. And this is gonna be a swim jig fish, okay? White swim jig. And this fish is gonna measure. Okay. Good deal. All right. There he is, right there. Let him go. Thank you, buddy. Appreciate it. Come on, come on. Take off. Worn out. There we go. Okay, so. First lure is down, guys. That is the uh, little fish hawk swim jig. That that fish, um, it is what it is, inches wise. So again, just write that down on a little piece of paper, and then we're gonna do tally at the end of this video, how many fish we have, how many total inches to win that subscription. So, all right, now we can move on. Let's see what we can move on to. That's the great part about these challenges. You don't have to sit here and just try to catch multiple fish on it. Just try to catch, catch one. So, okay. Just because the reeds are here, right? And we caught that fish there. We missed another one and one bit me back in there. So there's fish obviously in this little patch of grass. Um, I'm gonna flip this right here. I'm gonna flip it on probably like a 5 8 so I've got, I've got a little flipping stick rigged up over here. And let's see what, uh, let's see what we can do right there. You know, flipping is, um, a way to catch a really really big fish here on Okeechobee. I, I'd say the two biggest ways to catch a big bag here on Okeechobee is swimming a swim jig and flipping. Uh, like honestly that's a pretty good one-two punch. You know flipping here on the lake you're not gonna flip way back in. It's summertime these fish are not gonna be like set up for flipping way back in that thick stuff. Now yes I'm throwing the swim jig back across that stuff because that's you know those fish are chasing shad back in there but flipping like this I'm gonna flip the edges like I'm going down this this Kissimmee grass line and this reed line right here. You can see, if you look here behind me, you can see the points of grass that stick out. So, like you look at a high percentage spot, I'm always talking about fishing the high percentage spot, and that's a high percentage spot right there. A little jet that kind of comes out, a little pocket right there. That's where an ambush spot would be. See the little pocket behind it? This, this little zone right there looks really, really juicy, okay? And I'm not gonna flip it in there long. You know, you're really just trying to get a reaction strike. Let it sink to the bottom. It's about three feet deep right here. Now, if I get up to a really good, like right here, I'm going to go ahead and power pole down here just because you can't hit it all drifting this fast. Oh, there we go. But look, little pocket. Goes around, makes a bunch of little indentions. Makes another point right there. This is what I would call a high percentage little spot. The other thing you want to do is when you're flipping these reeds, and it's a little hard on a day that the wind's blowing just a little bit like this because those reeds are moving around, is really watch to see if you see, like you flip it in there like that, a lot of times you'll see the reeds go doo -doo, before you even feel anything. It's crazy, super crazy how these fish will grab this thing and you won't even feel it. But yet all the reeds shake, all everything shakes, and you're like, what just happened? Years ago on this, like I did a challenge uh, TV show actually, and I caught 30, I want to say 34 pounds. I think it was 34 that day, flipping. Reads just like this. And, uh, oh my gosh, can you imagine? I mean, that was so much fun, catching those giant ones. 
so many big ones that day. There he is. There. Come on out of there. Come on. Come on. There he is right there. Look at him pinned on the thing. Come on. Come on, dude. He's literally stuck on the grass. This is when they jump off right there. You go. Come on. Come on. Get off of there, dude. All right. I got to go in after him. This is when they get off. This is like the worst thing ever because that hook is stuck where he's wrapped or something. I'll pull down right here. There he is right there. Come on. Don't move. Don't move, dude. Don't move. Uh, got him. Uh, got him. All right. Wasn't pretty, but we did it. Not a big one, I, and I'm going to tell you right now, it's not long for these fish to get out here on these humps out here in the lake. These fish are just now starting to show up. Not a real big one, but a pretty pretty healthy fish right there. All right, so we're going we're gonna to measure this one, and this is going to be, again, let's hold him up for you, okay? Looks a little smaller. I'll give you that hand. It's a little smaller to me than the swim jig fish, okay? I'm going to measure him, and you're going you're gonna to calculate the inches for the flipping bait says so the second fish okay all right there we go here we go see you dude ha, we did it all right that's two down let's see what else we've got in this box let's see what else we have in here we're blowing through this thing pretty quick now a frog obviously obviously and these crankbaits right here you know I don't think I can catch them out here maybe on this little dude around around this corner here but if we go to the rim canal there's rocks and stuff the water's low right now this time of the year and those fish do gravitate to the rim canal i bet we can get on the closing channel take either one of these crankbaits and catch might just really catch a lot of fish on it actually so we're going to save that and let's go to the frog let's give this thing a shot let's check it out here okay first thing with a frog is to see how soft it is right and this is very soft. It has a good soft feel. The other thing is what kind of bite does it have? Meaning when this thing collapses, what do those hooks do? Is there anything in the way? No, that's a pretty, that collapses very well actually. And the hooks are sharp and they look strong. It's a popping frog. So, I mean, all in all, it's a pretty legit looking frog. Don't know if it's gonna catch anything or not, but it should. Let's give it a shot. So guys, this, uh, this frog, I'm gonna rig it up on 50 pound P-Line X braid. This is a, a favorite big sexy rod. And you know, there's a knot. I don't ever talk about my knots much, but the knot that I tie most of the time, especially with braid, is a Palomar, simple. Simple knot. Double your line, do a simple overhand, put the lure of the hook through the loop, pull down on it. Done deal. Right there. And I just noticed something, guys. Sometimes, sometimes, sometimes you notice things halfway through a shoot, and we're measuring them with my skeeter board. But check this out. Check this out. Okay. Bam. That's what we're going to measure them with. We're going to measure them with this going forward. Okay. So we've got a couple more fish to catch, hopefully, and uh, we're going to measure them on the on the Carl's measuring board here in the box, which is really ingenious to be able to put that in there. So pretty cool little deal right there. So guys, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make a little bit of a move. I got a, I got a couple areas right around the corner that I think will be a much better spot for the frog. A little, little calmer, a little shallower. We're back in this little, little bay right here. Little boat trail. Throw's good. Oh, dang it. That was that was a dry fire. Dry fire. Might have been a gar. That could have been a gar. Just kind of rolled up behind it. I'm not, I don't think it was a bass. It just kind of rolled up behind it. I didn't see the bait, so that was that was not good. 
a bass will get it right and that is one thing you have to pay attention to when you're frog fishing is keep your eye on the frog you know with this braid don't overwork it you don't want to work it too hard too fast but the, that's the great thing about braid it has no stretch so your frog is very responsive just on a light twitch of the rod but you want to keep your eye on that frog because when one comes up behind it and and a lot of times they'll swirl at it they might miss it and you know you gotta like you gotta tell yourself like that frog's not there and i and i can see the line moving off and then set the hook you know don't do like i just did there i was a little bit of a kind of a bad deal Oh, God, I missed him, guys. Got it, got it. Yeah, that's a good one. Look at that one. Look at that one. There he is. There he is. There he is. <laughs> Nice. All right. Cool, cool, cool. What's up, dude? What's up? About time. Now that's the longest I've had to fish for a frog and I've missed three and caught one, but we got it done on the frog. Finally, I was about to give up on it, to be honest with you. I was kind of sketching me out a little bit because it's a beautiful day for a frog. Like this is the day for a frog. It's shallow water, eelgrass, tilapia beds. Yeah, let's measure him again with the mystery tackle box box this time unfold unfold okay here get a good look at him good look at him there you go okay this is gonna be the frog fish okay all right now there you go and don't look at the box because you'll see the water marks see the water marks look, look. <laughs> a little tip for you a little hint that was cool guys you know these uh these challenges are, are fun because it forces you to catch a fish on these baits in this box. So I, I kind of like that challenge. It's 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 kind of neat. And um, this frog is is hey, it's above average. I, I'm I'm uh, I'm I'm happy with the frog. It 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 performed well. Again, it's soft. It's the colors are good. Um, the hooks feel right. I mean, even though I missed a couple, those really weren't the that really wasn't the frog's fault. It was more my fault so now let's dive into this box and see what else we have here you know we've, we've caught one on the flipping bait we've caught one on the swim jig we're basically left with two crankbaits here and uh, we've got the the jinko this is this this little crankbait right here i'm going to rig this one up with probably 15 pound line and this little uh, bds1 i'm going to say 12 to 15 pound line. it's a little bit smaller crankbait you can see this is a little finessey so I don't think I can catch one right here, but we're going to run back over towards the Cluiston Channel. And what's neat about the Cluiston Channel is there's limestone. I don't know if you'll be able to see any of it, but there's limestone drop-off right along those edge of those markers. And a lot of times there's some pretty nice fish hanging out around that. So let's take these two crankbaits and go see if we can't uh, catch one. All right, so what we have right here, we're on the Cluiston Channel. And uh, it should be a good little spot for that crankbait. You know, we've got, we've got rocks, a little drop-off. Pretty juicy little spot. You can't see well. You can actually you see a rock up in there. And uh, you know, Florida has a lot of limestone. And you think of people saying there's rock in Florida. It's limestone. It's not like big boulders. It's just flat limestone. And it's real, real porous. It's got holes in it. You do get hung up in it a lot, like I am right now. A lot of times it'll come out. But these fish. When the water gets low, they love getting around these limestone ledges. This little zone right here, guys, if you come to Cluiston to fish out of our marina, um, especially when the water's low, if the water's low and the water looks pretty good and the water's clean right here, um, this is a good little spot to fish. Right here in front of the rocks on both sides. You know, it's good deep water. These rocks, they just gravitate to them. So there's a lot of days that I've, I've caught a lot of fish right here. I mean, like literally catch the crap out of them so especially on a, like a windy day like a south wind this wind's coming this way this little spot gets really good so if you're over here you bring your boat you rent a boat you know give, give this little push channel a, 
a try. There's usually a, a couple schools of fish somewhere along this drop off. There's one. There's something like this. Look at this, guys. That's cool. Look at that. That is interesting. Oscar. Oh, that's awesome. Cool. This is a tropical fish from down in the Amazon, and they have they have gotten into the lake and the canal systems down here in South Florida. He jumps around like crazy. I gotta be a little careful, and we'll get it hooked. But that is an Oscar right there. Awesome looking fish. They're really super slimy, but they fight good. And there's um, a lot of people come down here to bluegill fish, and they also come down here to catch these things down in the canals and the Everglades. So that is cool. Check it out. Very awesome. Look at the orange, the dot on the tail. Awesome looking fish. That's a, I'll give you a good look at him right there. Okay, there he is. Okay. All right, I measured him. Very cool. All right. All right, we're getting to move on to the last. That's right. All right, so BDS1, the one I was the most excited about, caught a non-bass, but that's okay. We caught something on it, and we measured it. That was the that's that's the that's the challenge, right? Is to come up with the total inches, total inches of the fish that I caught today. I used to guide back in the day, and we'd always end the day usually right here or in that lock. We always catch one or two fish. Come on, fish! I used to call the one right up here my pet bass. Right here by this marker pole. This was my pet bass. I would tell a guy, if I had a customer, I would say, all right, get ready, right, right around that pole. He lives right around that pole. Somewhere in that little pocket right there. I catch him every day. His name's Charlie. And the people would be like, what? I'd be like, yeah. And sure enough, I mean, nine times out of 10, we caught a fish right there. Never was the same one. Never was really Charlie. But one just busted right there too. One just kind of flipped up. There he is. There's Charlie. There's Charlie. Charlie, what you doing, Charlie? <laughs> that is so cool, guys. That is so cool. We got Charlie. That's Char that's Charlie. Right here. There he is. That is so cool. Oh, that's funny. That's funny. That's good stuff right there. All right. Didn't catch any big ones today, but we caught fish on every lure we had in the box. We literally caught one on everything. Now, we didn't catch a bass on the BDS one. I get it. But there we go. Get a good look at him. Good look at him, guys. Okay, let me measure him up. All right, there we go. <laughs> Very cool. Very cool. All right, you know what that means? That means we did it. Mystery Tackle Box Challenge accepted. Mystery Tackle Box Challenge one. That was fun, guys. That was fun. So here's what we're going to do. Again, we caught uh, five fish, four bass and one Oscar, but we're going to count the Oscar, and we're going to do total length of those fish. And I'm going to post on my Instagram and Facebook, so be sure to go follow those. The results, the total inches in seven days from the post of this particular video. And again, the person that gets the closest or gets the exact inches is going to win a three-month supply of Mystery Tackle Box on me. So guys, thank you so much for hanging out. Um, like I said, we're getting ready to go on a little vacay, which is going to be awesome. We're not even going to take the cameras, guys. So we're not going to film the whole Bahamas thing, but I promise you this. When we get back, we're hitting the St. Lawrence and Lake Champlain. Those videos are going to be awesome. We're going to wind up the tour season, which I cannot wait to do. And, um, and then we're going to head back down to the Keys and do some stuff on the big boat. So guys, huge shout out to Mystery Taco Box for sponsoring this video. Once again, those guys are awesome and they have hooked me up with a code to pass on to you. So also, you can save $10 off on your first box by using 
this link right here again code scott make sure you type that in and uh, we're gonna drop that link in the description as well so be sure to check it out mystery taco box is a great thing guys like i said it provides you with lures that you probably wouldn't pick up at a tackle shop or maybe you would overlook them it kind of expands your horizons and uh it's a lot of fun anyways so guys thank you again we love you so much see ya Bye.